Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on linear motion. In this tutorial, we want to start practicing the equations of linear motion and how we can use them to work out some questions. Here, for an example, we have an application question where we want to determine the speed of a nerve impulse uh, given the height or the length that it has to cover and its approximate speed. Okay, now what is happening here? Well, the equation of linear motion are quite a number, but the most commonly used are just, just a few of them. Now, whenever you have constant speed or um, an average speed that you have to work with, the equation you have to use is always the same, the one that ha doesn't have acceleration. Because for constant speed, acceleration is equal to zero. So implying that, you remain with the definition of speed or basically just velocity. So most, most likely, or in most cases, I'll just write this distance over time. So in the absence of acceleration, this will, this will always be my go-to equation because acceleration is zero, implying that there's no change in velocity there. So we're going to deal with this, this, this equation. Or if you want, you can do, you can look at this equation in terms of velocity, but if you look at it in terms of velocity, what you have is going to be velocity is equal to displacement over time. So, but of course, in terms of the calculation, what you expect is that it's going to, to, to take a similar approach. So what is happening? Well, for this question, they're saying, the speed of a nerve impulse in the human body is about 100 meters per second. If you accidentally stab your toe in the dark, estimate the time it takes the nerve impulse to travel to your brain. So if you try to follow through the question here, we're given an approximate speed. And here, the idea is that the speed is kind of constant. It doesn't really change that much. So the speed of blood in the, the, the speed of the nerve impulse is it's been uh, approximated to be on average 100 meters per second. And what they want us to do is, they want us to approximate what the speed, what how long it would take a nerve impulse to travel to the brain. And then here, we're taking the height to be one meter. So depending on what your question might be, the height might be something else. Here we're saying take the height of this particular person to be, to be one meter. So again, because we're working with an average speed, it's a constant value of speed. There is no acceleration. So the speed is basically constant throughout and we're working with 100 meters per second. The length of this particular person or the height of the person is taken to be, um, we can say at the distance, is taken to be one meter. So in this case, we're assuming that the impulse has to travel the entire height of the person before it reaches its destination. Because here they want us to estimate how long it takes the impulse to travel to your brain. So we're making a slight approximation that the impulse has to travel the entire height of the person, one meter. Okay, so with that in mind, notice that we actually have everything that we need except what we're looking for, time. And since, again, the speed, the, the speed is constant, where the speed, we have that 100 meters per second, it's not changing. And then where we have distance, we have the height of the person, one meter, and then we have time, which is what we're looking for. From here, we cross multiply. We see that time is equals to one over 100, and then this becomes 0 0.01 seconds. This is a very, very small value, which actually makes sense. You want the impulse to travel very fast so that it can be interpreted and the correct action has to be taken. So this is how long it takes. We won't really get into the biology. Let's look at the next one and let's see how, how much of the biology we'll have to talk about when it comes to that particular question. Well, for the second part, let's say, what would happen if the speed of the nerve impulse was much lower, say one meter per second? Or well, here they're saying, what if the speed was much lower, one meter per second? What would happen? Let's take the same person whose height is one meter. And again, we're saying, 
we want to know how long the impulse would, would, would move. Well, if we use the same formula, now we have one meter or one meter per second, the velocity or the speed is equal to one meter over time. Now we're seeing that our value for time comes out as one second. So it takes a full second for the impulse to travel to the brain. Now, look at the difference. If the speed is slow, the time it takes for the impulse to travel is one second. But if the impulse is moving very fast, the time it takes for the impulse to reach the brain is very, very small, 0.01 seconds. What's the advantage of uh, the, the impulse moving very fast? Well, it means that the correct, the, the impulse is going to be translated meaning your accident will be noticed much, much sooner. Your body will know how to respond to that particular action or that stimuli in the shortest possible time. But if it takes longer to be translated, it means that more damage would have occurred. You would have injured yourself way more or maybe bleeding would have taken place uh, for quite some time. So it is risky if the impulse was to be moving very, very slow. It means that more damage could easily take place to, you, to, to, your, to your leg. You can easily hurt yourself a bit more. That is why it is important for the impulse to travel much, much faster so that it can be translated as soon as possible and the correct action can be taken so that you don't injure yourself or hurt yourself any further. Okay. So that is basically all, that's what you have to do to, to answer this question. I hope, I hope you found it helpful. In the next video, we're going to look at more questions to do with linear motion. But now we're going to look at questions that involve acceleration. So we're going to look at um, questions that have to do with the three equations of linear motion, V is equals to U plus AT. V squared, uh, I, I like writing them in order, S is equals to UT plus half, at squared. Lastly, v squared is equals to u squared plus two as. Here, s is the displacement. Sometimes we can, we'll use it as distance, just take note. We're not using it as distance, then we just mean that distance and displacement are basically the same in that case, or maybe it's in, in a straight direction in one path, then this is a displacement we will we'll be used interchangeably. And then of course, V is for final velocity, U is for initial velocity, A is acceleration, T is time, and what else is left? Basically, that is everything. These are the values we're going to use. S is displacement again. If I'm not using S for speed, S here is used for displacement. I'm write this so that it's clear as well. This is also S. Okay. So in the next video, we're going to look at how we can use these equations to work out um, some examples. So look out for that, you guys. Hope you found this helpful. This was your tutor. We'll see you guys in the next in the next video. And we're going to be looking at this interesting question. You can take a look at it. If you want to see the solution, see you in the next video.